This week's episode of our show is sponsored by our very own Dungeons of Drakenheim campaign, which is now available on the Ghostfire Gaming Store. Dungeons of Drakenheim is a campaign for players level 1 to 13 set in a ruined fantasy city with elements of dark fantasy and cosmic horror. The campaign, which is based on the events of the first season of our live stream campaign, sees your characters exploring the dangerous ruins of Drakenheim, co clashing with otherworldly monsters, dealing with eldritch contamination, and getting embroiled in an intrigue between five rival factions who are all trying to control the city. Since we've launched Dungeons of Drakenheim, so many Dungeon Masters have told us how much they and their groups love diving into this dark fantasy world of cosmic horror, and how easy it is to run the adventure based on the way that Kelly and I wrote the book. <laughs> The book is filled with interesting locations within the ruined city, as well as magic items, monsters, NPCs, and everything else you could possibly want to bring this cosmic horror fantasy setting to life. It's available in both hardcover and PDF, and there is also a bunch of different accessories that you can get as well to amplify your games of Dungeons of Drakenheim. So make sure to check the links below to get your hands on a copy of the book today. And now, onto this week's episode. Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe to this channel, like this video, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. Guard your mind, for today we are discussing how to slay a Mind Flayer in Dungeons and Dragons. Mind Flayers might be one of the coolest and most iconic monsters in all of Dungeons and Dragons. They are personal in my top probably three monsters for D&D and they have a lot of really cool and unique abilities they are terrifying for your players and they have a lot of tricks up their sleeves so we're going to talk about all that in today's episode we're going to break down their deadly abilities and how to prepare for taking one on both before and in the battle itself there's a lot to cover so let's get rolling now, when you're dealing with Mind Flayers, there are three degrees of horror that are possible with these creatures. You could be facing a single Mind Flayer, who is the mastermind of their own minions and their own lair. You could be dealing with a group of Mind Flayers, which is far scarier, working together to pull strings behind the scenes. Or you could be working with a Mind Flayer colony, led by an Elder Brain. These are also uh, equivalent to the three different tiers of play in D&D, &D. and for today we're going to be assuming that we're dealing with either a single Mind Flayer or maybe a small group of Mind Flayers. If we do want to cover the third option, that will probably be in an Elder Brain video, not a Mind Flayer video. Now, the Mind Flayer is a terrible alien psionic entity, vaguely humanoid with the head resembling a cephalopod complete with tentacles. They are known for their vast intellect and their psychic abilities, occasionally dabbling in arcane magic as well. Mind Flayers, because of their psychic abilities, are also greatly feared for their taste for brains that they devour through the beak that is concealed by their beard of tentacles, that they will latch onto your skull and eat your brain. Despite this visceral body horror and the fact that Mind Flayers reproduce by implanting tadpoles that burrow behind your eye and into your brain and turn you into a Mind Flayer, perhaps the most terrifying element of Mind Flayers themselves are the fact that they are scheming psychic villains. Now, Oddly enough, the Mind Flayers, with their vast intellect, like to hide underground, and they are mostly associated with the Underdark, but can also be found in underground layers underneath cities or towns, uh, really anywhere where they can get a good hiding place to start pulling the strings of the people above. At high levels of play, Mind Flayers might also be plane-hopping entities, boarding their nautilus ships that traverse the astral planes from the Far Realms, and in some cases, Mind Flayers have built multiversal spanning empires to rule over countless populations as psychic overlords. Because of the scale, I think one of the things that is most terrifying about a Mind Flayer is that you probably don't know you're fighting one until it's too late. 
And as we talk about their deadly abilities, I actually think that it's important to note that facing a Mind Flayer in combat is not necessarily as scary as trying to uncover the Mind Flayer behind the scheme. Mm -hmm. And so when we discuss defeating a Mind Flayer, it's more than just in combat. It's about the schemes that they're setting up the signs that you might encounter when looking for the Mind Flayer. You come across the dreary town and all the people in the town are acting strange. There's something going on behind the scenes, but you're not quite sure what it is. You should start protecting your brains because you might be in Mind Flayer territory. So to understand this threat, let's break down what a Mind Flayer is actually capable of as an individual. Mind Flayers themselves are aberration monsters. They're vaguely humanoid in shape, however, and they have a variety of psionic abilities, innate magic resistance, and a very powerful mind blast that sends out a wave of distorting psychic energy that can stun and cause psychic damage. Their innate psychic abilities also give them the ability to levitate, detect thoughts at will, and they can also dominate monster once per day individually they also have the ability to plane shift themselves once per day this means that when you're looking at their abilities their mind blast is probably the most terrifying element that they have if they unleash their mind blast on the party and everybody fails their saving throw that's about it for the party they are <laughs> now food for the mind flare there is the opening for a really cool situation and by cool i mean cool in the sense that it's a cool story it's not a cool situation to be in where the mind blast goes off the party falls victim to it and they wake up in the preparation chamber to have the mm. tadpoles inserted into their eyes, and now you have an escape mission on your hands. I have seen a case where a unprepared party was entirely struck by a mind blast, they all failed their saving throws, and the mind flayer proceeded to eat their brains one by one, while their squirming allies failed to shake out of the stun because they all had plus zero and minus one to their intelligence saving throws. And this also, there is the eating the brains yeah. ability here, which is terrifying when you think about it. But it should be pointed out that this actually isn't their most scary ability. It's the most scary sounding. But unless their mind blast goes off flawlessly, it's very unlikely that a mind flayer is going to stop to take lunch in the middle of combat. Yeah, I think players fear the extract brain more than they should. Because if the brain extraction is happening in the midst of a combat, I think you've lost already. And that's that's what <laughs> that's what's to be careful. Of. Like yeah. if if the mind flayer thinks it has the opportunity to extract your brain, it means that it thinks it's already won the combat encounter. If you all get mind blasted, then be terrified yeah. of having your brain eat. Yeah, but a mind flayer that is trying to take a snack in the middle of battle um, might be leaving themselves vulnerable in, in an awkward way. And per personally, whenever I, I, I've seen it go two ways, basically. When I've faced a Mind Flayer that it has pulled off the Mind Blast and has been eating everybody's brains, the thing with the, the, the extract brains thing is that it, it either requires the, someone to be stunned by the Mind Blast or for the Mind Flayer to grab them and then eat their brain. So... A mind flayer that's putting themselves in the position to eat the brain actually is putting themselves in a very vulnerable position unless they have minions to protect them or unless they have control over the whole flow of the battle. So don't necessarily be the most worried about it. If you're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with a mind flayer, it's probably not going to try to grab you and eat your brain. That would be a pretty foolish move on its part. It's actually more likely to use its plane shift ability to get out of there if yeah. the whole party is standing toe to toe with the Mind Flayer. Mind Flayers will often have thralls and minions at their disposal, which I would throw down as a deadly ability as well. Absolutely, especially if those thralls happen to be ones created by Intellect Devourers, because you might see that Mind Flayer with a bodyguard of bugbears and 
kill that bugbear only for its head to explode and an intellect devourer to jump out of it. And now you're susceptible to the intellect devourer taking oh, you yeah. over. <laughs> so the Mind Flayers do have their thralls of minions, which are just as scary. And once you're toe to toe with the Mind Flayer, you got to be quick on taking them out because they're just going to plane shift out of there and wait for an opportunity for them to get the upper hand again. Defensively, Mind Flayers have magic resistance, which I believe makes them very difficult to target with any magic that targets their intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saving throws. Don't even... It, it, with magic resistance and their saving throw bonus, it is so likely that they will just slough off these kinds of spells that it's really not worth it. On the flip side, Mind Flayers are pretty weak feebly. For their challenge rating, they don't have a high AC and they don't have a lot of hit points. And their constitution, dexterity, and strength saving throws are not bad, but they don't really have much of a bonus here either. While they do present a formidable psychic and mental threat, Mind Flayers are not much of a physical threat to you. The biggest thing that you have to worry about though I think with a Mind Flayer, is their intellect. And that's where we get into the fatal mistakes that you can make as a party going to face a Mind Flayer. And the number one is to underestimate their intellect. This isn't about getting toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and fighting them. It's about outsmarting the scheme that's at play with them. And I think that a lot of parties underestimate this. They're like, oh, there's a Mind Flayer around? Let's go kill it. But you have a lot to worry about getting there. A Mind Flayer will have plans within plans. And this is why we say for the most part, a Mind Flayer will often act through their thralls and their minions, who are usually controlled psionically in some way by the Mind Flayer. So your biggest evidence that you might be dealing with a Mind Flayer is people who suddenly begin behaving in strange or erratic ways, or also the, the subtle notion that it seems like your thoughts are being acted on. You feel like you're being watched, like someone or something is always a step or two ahead of you. Why were those ruffians so eerily prepared for us? How did they know that we were coming after them? Why was all the evidence suddenly taken away? How come our good friend, the tavern keeper, is acting strangely? These are all the things that might sow the seeds of paranoia and even start ha having you thinking, maybe you can't even trust your own allies. <laughs> I think that when we talk about the alien intellect of a mind flayer, this also means that judging them the same way you would an, any other humanoid creature, assuming that you might know what the scheme is or what the plan is or what their purpose or goals are, that's going to be a mistake as well. Mm -hmm. These creatures are aliens from another plane of existence whose goals are beyond us. And I think that if being played properly, they are going to represent that. And it might be completely useless to try to get to the bottom of why. It might just be a threat that you need to take out. A Mind Flayer doesn't feel mercy in a human sense. They don't feel empathy. They don't really have any sense of the morality that human beings might have in terms of good and evil. In some respects, they might even be beyond that that mortal morality. And so ascribing their motivations and what sort of inscrutable or paradoxical things they might actually be after, you might find it difficult to bargain or reason with them despite their intelligence. When I think of the way that Mind Flayers view other creatures, I'm often reminded of when I first saw Prometheus and mm. I was chatting with my friends about it and it was the idea that the architects didn't care about humans. Humans were soil for them to grow something more beautiful out of. In this yeah. case, xenomorphs. But the xenomorph analogy is actually quite precise for the uh, mind flayers who install their tadpoles into the human eye to mm. infect their brain and then out comes... Yeah, mind a mind flayer is a bizarre alien parasite. And its view of humanity is, yes, 
human beings are their food source and the incubators for their next generation. And so why would you reason with them? You don't reason with soil that you plant your vegetables in. Why would a mind flayer reason with humans yeah. who are its soil to grow its young out of? It's They are incubators. You don't reason with the incubator. Yeah. And so because a mind flayer might simply have that uncaring attitude towards human existence entirely, it can make them a pernicious foe because they don't value the same things that we value. I'm almost imagining the fact that a mind flayer might not even converse with humans. The humans are trying to escape and they just keep putting them back on the table, time like yeah. latching them. Well down. they only speak psychically. Yeah. Right? Like they, they they do have a language in a in a truly alien sense, but they communicate telepathically. And I think that this is one of those other deadly abilities that you can't forget is that mind flayers can coordinate with their minions telepathically they can control so you don't even know who could be reporting back you don't even know how they could be communicating with one another because you could have a mind flayer's minion and you might have killed that minion but everything that minion saw everything it thought everything it experienced the mind flayer knew it and when it comes to underestimating the mind flayer its ability to spy on you could be really, really, like really, really high. It has detect thoughts and it has dominate monster. And some mind players might have additional psionic abilities or spell casting. They might have things like scrying. They might have longer range telepathy, especially as you get into groups of mind players where you might have um, their leaders that have these broader psychic abilities or the abilities to use psychic hubs like mind witnesses. Their communication capability is really advanced. And so they're going to be able to figure out a lot about you. They're going to be able to plan a lot about you. And even though they think differently, they're going to understand you more than you'll be able to understand them. So how are we going to get prepared to face a mind flare? Uh, and preparing is actually the most important part about facing the mind flare. If you start to get the inkling that you are going to be facing a mind flare, Remember that your intelligence and wisdom scores are probably going to be targeted. Yeah. And so when we look at essential gear, if you can get your hands on a headband of intellect, maybe the wizard already has a headband <laughs> of intellect, but they may want to pass that off to the dumb barbarian or fighter just to save them from an intellect devourer or the mind flayer eating their brain. I think that... The terrifying thing about the Mind Flayer is that mundane equipment is not really going to help you in the mental battle that you will be fighting against a Mind Flayer. No. We got to go to magical gear almost right away here. And this is where the swords and the shields and the armor don't matter. We need to sharpen our minds and shield our brains. And the best way to do that is a ring of mind shielding and an amulet of proof against detection and location. Because you gotta win, you gotta level the information playing field here. And I think the number one assumption you should make when you have the inkling that you are dealing with mind flayers is that you are going to be watched. You are going to be spied on. And tools like these are your only way of protecting against the psionic intrusion of a mind flayer. Now, when it comes to actually fighting a Mind Flayer, because of their nature, they're going to be dishing out psychic damage. So if you can get your hands on a potion of psychic resistance, mm -hmm. then that's going to help out. Uh, but yeah, really, it's all about psychics yeah. and protecting your brain. Find the things that boost your saving throws. Find the things that make, make it so your thoughts cannot be read. Find the things that make you resistant to being charmed, especially... <laughs> Anything that can yeah. bolster your saving throws. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's going to help out. And so this is where spells might give you more options, but less permanent ones. So a really great example of this is if you're facing a Mind Flayer, you might want to have a base of operations that you cast Mordenkainen's Private Sanctum on, and that's the only time you discuss your plans. <laughs> you might want to use non-detection spells. If you have access to Mind Blank at very high levels use it beyond I, this though there's a couple interesting spells that could really help you 
I think that the first level spell, Protection from Evil and Good, uh, this is actually where it has its most useful purpose. Yes. Because and, it will protect you against aberration, surprisingly. Yes, which the Mind Flayer is an aberration. Casting this on your weaker characters, which when we're talking about the Mind Flayer, the weaker characters aren't the wizard and the sorcerer. They're the fighter, the barbarian, yeah. the paladin. Anybody who decided to dump their intelligence and wisdom scores is going to be a liability. Yeah. And so therefore... You want to protect them with spells that will shield or bolster those abilities. Protection from evil and good will give advantage on saving throws against intelligence, wisdom, and charisma spells created by aberrations and fiends. So it is a golden ticket for a good level of protection for a first level spell slot. It's going to require concentration, but the other thing is that it also means that whoever's protected cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed as well while they're under the effect of it. So this can be an effective safeguard against having your weaker-willed party members mind-controlled, charmed, and dominated by the Mind Flayers. You might also consider a spell like Intellect Fortress, which comes along with resistance to psychic damage. I personally think protection from evil and good is more robust, even though it doesn't give you the psychic damage resistance. And when it comes to actually being a spellcaster who wants to destroy this Mind Flayer quickly, keep in mind again that their weakest saving throws are going to be Strength and Dexterity and Constitution. Which, interestingly enough, means that if we are using Cold or Poison damage against them, we're going to be targeting the right things. Mm -hmm. AoE spells, if they're surrounded by minions, a Fireball is going to help out here. This also means that they're going to have a lot of trouble escaping from things like Web or Bigby's Hand. Exactly. And ultimately, a Mind Flayer does not have a good ar armor class, and it doesn't have a lot of hit points. And so even just applying those ranged direct damage spells against them could take them out quite quickly. I do like having a couple spells like Vortex Warp or Thunder Wave or Telekinesis that can be used to break the grapple of a Mind Flayer. <laughs> just ha or even having spells that are teleportation spells that can teleport your party members out of a grapple right. can be really helpful for saving them if the Mind Flayer is going to eat their brain. Now, when we move from spells onto class features, same rules apply here. We want to kill the Mind Flayer quickly. They're going to plane shift out of there if they think they're in a losing situation. So your best bet is to kill them in one turn if you can. Once... The cards are down. Their minion's gone. The moment that the Mind Flayer says, I better get out of here, you have until their turn to yep. kill them or else they're going to disappear. This is why I think that you paladins out there, get ready to drop your highest level smite. Fighters, get ready to use your action surge. If you are a monk, try to land those stunning strikes. Blow all of your key points on stunning strikes with every single attack yeah. to try to get this creature stunned. I also think while talking about Paladin smiting, yes, taking it down is awesome, but also bolstering your party is awesome. So stick close to that Paladin that has their aura of protection. Yeah, even though you might all get hit, the only tip flip side of that is risking all getting hit by the Mind Blast, right? But the, the, with the Paladin aura there, it's a bit of a, uh, you really don't want anyone stunned by that. I would rather be a fighter with low intelligence standing next to the Paladin and us both yeah. getting hit than standing away from the Paladin and me being the fighter getting targeted. Yeah, and for the for the characters with the really high intelligence saving throws, it just means that they won't have to worry about getting stunned by it at all. Um, I also do think that when you are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Mind Flayer, things that can close the distance are really important. So if you can teleport up to that Mind Flayer so that you can get up to them and fight them, get past their minions. Because a Mind Flayer is going to use their minions in a physical way to body block you. So if you have an ability like flight or teleportation or something that lets you get past those minions by avoiding opportunity attacks so you can beeline right for the Mind Flayer. Th this is a classic example of like, we talked about the strategy of ignoring the minions and going right for the boss on other videos before, and the Mind Flayer is the textbook example of why you want to do this. Because they are unequivocally the most dangerous thing in the room. Ignore the minions, kill the flare. <laughs> and I think that actually bridges perfectly to our winning strategies. That's the first yep. big winning strategy here is 
even if you are going to take some opportunity attacks, once you have the Mind Flayer in your sights and are able to attack yeah. it, it might be worth taking a couple opportunity attacks to just try to nuke the Mind Flayer. Totally. Damage is the least dangerous thing that is happening with a Mind Flayer battle. Yeah. It is all about what's happening up here. And for you, the, this is a brains over brawn thing too. If you would just put that force right in front of them, then you're going to have the Mind Flayer on the back foot. And even though they can have all these plans, right? I like to think of that classic, classic line. It's like, you still got to deal with the steel. And the Mind Flayer ultimately is a, is a creature that can be killed. And so it doesn't have a lot of hit points. You get that fighter up there. You get them on the action surge, the Barbarian Rage, the Paladin Smite. It can take them out in one round. And that sh hopefully is what you can pull off. Yeah, because if you don't, they're going to leave and come back with more. Yeah. And and I think that is that is the scariest thing, is facing the Mind Flayer, failing to kill it, and knowing that at some point in the future, it's going to come back. Mm -hmm. And it might be a little annoyed with you. And it might have friends. And this is also where I think that the Mind Flayer probably has a contingency of some kind. Maybe not the contingency spell, but they might have some kind, especially if they are the Mastermind that has some magical abilities or other psionic abilities, they might have some reactions that they can use to protect themselves last minute. Which is why, if you can have that second strike capability against a Mind Flayer, where if for some reason, oh yeah, it turns out the fighter got up there, but the Mind Flayer had a reaction teleport power, or they had the shield spell. This is where also having those effective ranged attacks really does help because they can be retargeted and reused, or having ways to counter the psionics of the Mind Flayer with things like, depending on if you've got Dispel Magic or Counter Spell to shut those things down. Because, yeah, you could be operating against a creature that is both a psionic creature and a spellcaster. And so you'll want to bring those things along, too. Generally speaking, in the strategies for facing a Mind Flayer, most of your strategies are coming before you're even toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. It's about knowing the signs, uncovering yeah. the truth that you are facing a Mind Flayer. And generally speaking, if you get into combat with one, it's because it thought that it had the upper hand. So mm -hmm. you want to be aware of what situation you're in. If you do witness the Mind Flayer, what's around you? Are you yeah. sure that you have the upper hand? Or are you falling right into its plan as it expected you to? And that's why I really do think that you have to find a way to stay a step ahead of it. And that, that's why that winning strategy for me is counterintelligence. Can you go through the minds of its minions by interrogating them using magic? Can you spy on it using your own scrying spells? And then at the same time, you got to be protecting yourself from being spied on. And you're going to need some magic to do that. Because this is how you're going to be able to bring the Mind Flayer to battle. Otherwise, it's going to find a way to... it. Like, it might just pick you apart. You know what I mean? Like, um, there, there's... I can think of several adventures involving Mind Flayers where the goal of the Mind Flayers is to actually infiltrate the party itself and replace party members. One of the most effective minions for a Mind Flayer is a doppelganger or something that involves a bit of illusion magic. Yeah. Um, or having that party member that gets zapped with the intellect devourer and is now a complete plant inside the party. And so you have to make sure that that is not occurring. And the the scary thing about facing a Mind Flayer is, is that it might already have happened before you're aware of it. So that's where you have to be looking for the signs of, has someone been compromised? If you've encountered a Mind Flayer or have ran one, please tell us about your favorite tactics and strategies in the comments below. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube, please consider supporting the channel by following the links in the description below. And if you want to see us going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some amazing monsters, you can check out our live play in the Worlds of Drakenheim, which airs Tuesday evenings on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. 
And we've got plenty more coverage on the monsters of D&D right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.